So where'd you, you start out in? Where were your stops? So, is what you want yeah, to ask. so he, here's the deal. I am about as Colorado as you can get. I uh, was going to the University of Colorado. I was uh, trying to get into the journalism school because I wanted to be a VJ on MTV. That's what I thought, you know, because that they actually played video when I was going to school there. Right. And uh, I um, got C's in the weed out classes for the journalism school. And so I went to the dean. This guy's name was uh, Charles Middleton or Chuck Middleton is what he was known as. And I said, uh, hey, all I want to do is be, you know, in radio and turn people on to music. And he goes, he goes, man, this is for uh, TV and print. He goes, go down to the, the community station, KGNU, and volunteer. And I did. And I was on the air within two weeks. And um, so I was a volunteer DJ at the community station throughout college. I ended up getting an, Eng an English lit degree. And then uh, I started interning at KBCO. And so a month before I graduated, I got hired by KBCO uh, straight out of college. So, and my last month, this will tell you how long ago it was, I was uh, doing the overnights from midnight to six, and then I'd catch a few hours of sleep and go to finish my classes, you know, uh, at the University of Colorado. So I was a mess for a month, and then I just was a DJ after I graduated. So it was kind of kind of perfect. But I went, um, so KGNU, then KBCO, and then I moved to California, and I was in the Bay Area at uh, KRSH. That might be where we met Dave uh, for the very first time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they they hired me to be the PD morning guy and everything. And then I missed Colorado and I came back in 2001 and uh, worked for Colorado Public Radio. And then uh, this this really cool Americana station, KC, uh, v, KCUV for a while. And that went bankrupt. And uh, yeah, uh, started the Colorado Sound back in uh, 2012 and was working with them uh, until I moved to, to Dallas or moved to <laughs> <Dallas>. <laughs> yeah that's right i was wondering what happened at the kcu so that you said they they just uh so blocked. it was owned by phil anschutz the a of aeg entertainment right mm -hmm. right and we were losing this was back in 2008 we were losing 125,000 bucks a month and phil even though he's a billionaire doesn't like to lose any money. <laughs> and so they pulled the plug. Up. We just went black. Uh, it was going into Labor Day weekend. I'll never forget that. They just pulled the plug on this thing and said, uh, you know, thanks for the memories. Here's a two week severance check. And by the way, your insurance is good for a month. And that was it. So that was a oh sad. My God. So, so what happened to it after that? Uh, it turned into a Jack FM station. And uh, so it was a jukebox of 80s, 90s and 2000s hits. And that was that's what it was. Um, in fact, uh, a guy you guys might know, Brian Shock was uh, programming it at, at that time. So mm. that's how I got to know Brian as well. Wow. All right. So, OK, did you grow up listening to to Dennis Constantine or is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You... Uh, I grew up listening to Dennis. And it, it, it's so funny because, uh, you know, he's the one that uh, he was consulting KRSH out in Santa Rosa. And, uh, you know, he thought I would be the, a perfect, you know, program director. And so he's the one who got me the job in uh, San Francisco. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, so I owe a lot to Dennis. Uh, he and I have been good. For, it was weird to go from listener to boss to mentor to, you know, friend. And uh, and we we still are good friends today, which is kind of funny. So I love that. That's great. Right. I know. Yeah. It's lucky if you find someone like that in your life in any, you know. Yeah. Well, you capacity. know, KBCO back in the days, I mean, uh, it, it was it was such an amazing place because it was uh, so I was working there with Dennis. Uh, John Bradley was there at the time. Um, Scott Arbo was the assistant music director when mm -hmm. when I started there to give you some perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it, yeah, so I, I mean, I you got three of the biggest names in the business that I got to learn radio from when I was this 22 yeah. year old, you know, newbie, which was mind boggling you know i i soaked it up like a sponge i did everything i possibly could when i was uh with those guys yeah and, and what was for you as a kid did you listen you were listening to bco or what what was your yeah, as a team I was, was that, I was that kid uh who, okay. who <laughs> sought out good radio and uh you know that i mean i've known i was supposed to be doing this since i was 
little, little, little. This is all I've ever wanted to do, which is, you know, some of the records I've got in here are literally from my, you know, paper route that I would buy with my paper route money and things like that. So, uh, you know, I, I've been a consumer of music ever since. And I got lucky. I mean, I was in Boulder, Colorado when KBCO was a freeform radio station. And so that to me is what good radio was. And so now that it's radio has become this corporate, just whatever, uh, you know, I'm trying to bring back good radio. That's kind of my mission for right now, because a lot of people, most people under the age of 30 have never heard good radio. They don't know what it sounds like. And uh, we're, we're trying to bring it